Good morning, everybody. War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to go over the brief campfire summary. I'm just going to kind of break down everything that kind of happened during the dev stream and uh, just kind of give my feedback and thoughts about it going forward with Diablo 4 because I'm very, very excited for some of these changes. So if you guys weren't there to watch the entire thing, we're going to kind of break down the main points here and just kind of talk about this stuff. So let's get right into it. So first things first is that the devs 100% said that they are not 100% are not doing any kind of pay to win structures inside of Diablo 4 that is not happening. There's no pay to win. All this came out with the allegations and the leaked, you know, um, survey that happened, all this survey stuff. Now, they didn't deny the survey, which is kind of interesting but they did confirm twice at the beginning and the end of the dev stream that there is no pay to win that is coming to diablo 4 or pay for power so that is a big big you know big thing to kind of take in i think that's freaking awesome that they cleared that up because as soon as that got leaked the community was completely outraged so they got that done now let's move on to we're just going to do the things in order here because i kind of took some notes and just uh kind of talked about some things so they got the midwinter blight coming right this starts on the december 12th which is weird because we get avid around december 5th and then we get the new uh winter blight december 12th which is kind of cool um it's gonna be led in with this um this gentleman here this guy that has like a little bit of a story um, this dude he's gonna come in there's gonna be a really really nice storyline and there's gonna be something cool to do and you're gonna be able to go through and complete the storyline here in kovashad which I mean, I kind of like that they're doing this little, you know, uh, kind of making things look like hell tides. I think this is pretty cool um, just for like reference to when they're doing events or something that you can make, you know, easily identify with um, when you're going to do something. It's only going to be in Kovashad or Kmart, so it's pretty cool. But once you go through and complete the storyline and, you know, you're going to get to the boss, which is this big uh, BA guy right here with his big, huge axe. Um, you're going to be able to defeat him um, and get the treasure, and that's going to be for some really nice cosmetics, which is pretty awesome that you'll get. These are just free cosmetics for participating in the event. I think it's pretty awesome. It's just something really easy to do, something um, to kind of theme for Christmas because it's the holidays and we're all in the holiday spirit. So I think it's really, really cool that they're doing something like this. Um, I wish that there was a little bit more to it, but this is just the start to the like mid season or in season holiday events. So I hope they do more stuff like this because I think a lot of this stuff is really, really cool just to kind of take the edge off, bring in some fresh content and just kind of get people doing some other things. So next, and probably the biggest one that people are very, very excited about is the abattoir of Zir. They have, uh, they released a live demo here showcasing with rich, uh, the senior community manager over at Diablo. He's playing a ball lightning build, and it really looks like he has a decked out build here. He's rocking control. Um, he has Talrashas. It is ball lightning. So he's going to go through and do a Avatar of Zir um, showcase, which is at level one and then at level 10, which is actually kind of cool. So it shows over here at the Occultist that like he goes in, you can just craft these sigils. It also looks like he has Shaco to Baltz and then as well as the unique staff or the uber unique staff just to swap in if he needs but you guys can see that he's creating being able to craft the blood forge sigils uh, i do want to see uh, mentioned right here that these sigils cost a lot this is level one and it's 800 sigil dust which is more than anything that we create inside of diablo 4 even for normal nightmare dungeons so definitely guys save up your sigil dust you're going to need it make sure you farm all weekend until the fifth we only got four days left so make sure to farm up as much as possible now it's pretty pretty cool here um it's weird that it shows them like off centered here i don't know why you could create eight level sixes and nine level threes but it has the level six next to one or so i don't know maybe that's just a rough thing because it's on a private dev server but through it threw me off for a second so he's going to pop the sigil and he's actually going to like go in and do the fight. Um, and you can see like in the avatar of Zir that, you know, you got the timer, right? Slay the monster before the time comes out. One thing I want to note is that you don't have any lives. You have zero lives remaining, which is actually kind of interesting because if you die, you're done. You have to go make another sigil and then do it all over again. So you want to build something extremely tanky and still can put the damage output. Now, I do want to mention that he is using the glyph the brand new glyph which is i'm going to tell you right now completely mandatory 
Now you can see that the monster levels are 105. It seemed like they were going up, not 105, but 155. It seemed like they were going up but one level per sigil, but that changes when you see the level 10 because it doesn't make sense. But uh, let's skip to the to level 10. But before we showcase that, you can see that when you finish the Nightmare Dungeon or the Avatar of Dungeon. Now the bosses, I am a little disappointed here with the bosses because when you do finish it and the timer changes, uh, you have the remaining time to defeat the Guardians and it spawns three Blood Seekers, which are incredibly powerful, but it, it's just a little bit of a letdown that it's not like Zer himself or some kind of boss. It's just three Blood Seekers. But even with that, they are extremely hard bosses and you really need to take your time defeating them. They um, all come with their own affixes. Uh, they're all going to be different affixes. They can have, like, he has poison, enchant, lightning, enchant, and terrifying. He has some different ones. So be wary of that. They're always going to change. And then one of the cool things here is that when you're doing your sigils, right, your upgraded glyphs, this is something that we talked about in previous videos, how we were concerned about, like, well, how much glyph XP are you going to get, etc. So you have the Tears of Blood glyph, and you're getting a 1,000 EXP to allocate to this. Now, you can see that it's a huge 0.10% or 0.1% increase, which is kind of nuts. And the amount of actual glyph XP is kind of insane. You, not only are you going to be able to level this thing up like crazy, but you could easily, easily level a glyph. You know, if it's 1,000 XP, you could run three tiers of bloods and level a glyph from 1 to, to 25 to 21 in three runs. It's kind of insane because you only need 3,000 3, in, in five or six XP to level one up but it's the damage increase is actually exponential even on going from level one to two which is uh pretty interesting um i wish like i wish they would stop talking and just i'm trying to skip towards it so you guys can see the the increase but yeah it's a it's a exponential gain here and it's kind of insane now i want to skip real quick now this is a this is a tier 10 that he's doing and you can see that he's struggling with his damage. He does die here. You see how much farther he is behind. I do want to mention that he is testing this dungeon at a tier 10 with no glyph. He's not using the blood glyph. He's not using, you can tell, he's just dealing no damage at all. Basically, it's very, very slow damage. Um, so the, the new glyph is 100% mandatory. Okay, I would not try to do this stuff. Uh, especially with how much sigil dust it costs to make these glyphs um, just to throw away as an experiment maybe maybe you do one or two as an experiment but after that make sure you have that glyph because just to go through and just die because it's a struggle you can see he's out of potions it's a real struggle um they also go on to mention that with the avatar of zero like not to not to do it in a group you need to do it solo because of how hard it is um, inside the town, when you pop a sigil, you're going to have a portal spawn and you're going to go through and do the dungeon. So Avatar is here. I'm very, very excited. Looking forward to uh, the end game with that and just to see how that all plays out. Um, I'm very, very curious to see how the uh, community is going to respond to this. Now, the biggest thing over here is itemization. They go on to talk about a lot of changes coming to Diablo uh, for itemization. And a lot of it is literally just... 925 item power and then just the stat affixes that they want to really get a hold on they mentioned that there's only a few ways that we can get 925 gear besides random drops and that's durial and a world boss so they want to open up more ways for us to be able to get 925 item power and more importantly get our stat changes or or suffixes on our stats for stat suffixes um our item <laughs> Our item stats on a gear piece, they want to be able to get us to find some that are more useful because if we're not looking for something like shrine buff duration, they're really trying to itemize all that and make it easier for us to be able to filter through loot, which brings me to another topic. They are going to be bringing in a loot filter. It's not going to happen anytime soon um, because they want to make a huge change to itemization, which is going to come in season four. It's not going to be in season three. So season four will have a huge itemization change, which I'm very, very excited for just to make um, items even better 
uh, in Diablo 4, especially in the end game. Until you get to the end game, it's really a problem. But like, if you're level 76 and you have all 925 gear because you got somebody to carry you through Durio runs or whatever the case is, and you have your gear, well, now you have nothing to really push for. So they want to change how you're able to kind of min-max your builds, especially at the the pure end game of Diablo 4. Um, and then after that, there's just a few questions, guys. But those are the main things, and they go on for this big sign-off which Joe is very passionate about. And um, and it comes from a place I think is the same thing, like where we want the, the game to be good, right? So they're they're very, very excited. They want us to give feedback. So guys, go do the Avatar of Zero, go do all the feedback and um, just have an absolute blast. So um, all in all, I'm very, very excited about a lot of this stuff coming. Um, Avatar of Zero seems very, very fun. I can't wait to test it out. Uh, you got the midwinter blight event, which is going to be super cool. Just a, like a little side event, something else to do. And then uh, itemization is going to be coming in season four. And they're also bringing big changes in season three, too. So I'm very excited for the future of Diablo. It seems like they're just continuing to hit um, on all cylinders since their huge um, downfall in season one, which is what they talked about. They said that they learned a great deal from it. So I'm very, very excited to keep on having a rapport with Diablo and the guys over the devs over there i really hope that they reach out to more creators and more um players and really just kind of go back and forth on the feedback and just i really want this game to be amazing so yeah that's all i gotta say about it just a brief recap guys um make sure to like the video comment don't forget to subscribe and we're live oh four days a week so yeah as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace